you don't have the jewel thief connected to a Peltier plate. The plate is mounted on a heatsink which is at 23 degrees Celsius at the moment. My hand is at 30 degrees. And by just applying body heat, I'm going to push the voltage up there. It is 70 millivolts. Let's put three fingers on there. There we go. So at less than 90 millivolts, that's less than one tenth of a volt, I'm able to power a light with only my body heat. This of course assumes that the heat sink will remain at that temperature, so it assumes that the cooling on the heat sink is good enough. These three components form what is known as a Joule Thief circuit. It is a slightly simplified version. What it does is take very low voltage input and then boost that in pulses so that you can power high voltage components such as LEDs. My circuit contains subtle changes from the typical Joule Thief design. Nothing new or innovative. I've just tried to present the components in a nice compact and neat package that should be easy to integrate into a product. This is one application that I've always found interesting and with a lot of potential. Not my own idea, others have done this before. Talking about using your head. Okay, now for the schematic I've decided to draw out the coil as you would wind it onto a cylindrical core. You take two wires and wrap them as a pair around your core. And then when you're done with that, you take opposite ends of two different wires and join them together. The more common Joule Thief design that uses an NPN type transistor, that point would go to the positive power input. Here I have drawn an NPN type transistor. I'm going to first draw out the circuit the conventional way and then I'll show how my circuit differs from that. This wire can then go down into the collector and that opposite wire goes to the gate. The emitter goes to ground or your negative input and then you would attach your LED with its anode also going to ground. Oh yeah, before I forget, one additional component that you almost always see is a resistor on this wire going to the gate. There are numerous videos available that will explain the details of how this coil and transistor configuration creates an on-off pulsing cycle. For this explanation all I'm going to say is that a, an LED requires a certain minimum voltage before it starts shining. Without the enough voltage it doesn't conduct. Now when the transistor is open that blue lead drains into the ground. This transistor then shuts down very quickly. That creates a voltage spike over there. So as soon as that voltage rises above the minimum required to activate this LED, the current then flows through the LED until the transistor opens up and the current drains through the transistor again. I don't use the NPN type transistor, I use a PNP type. It's one of the old germanium designs and it allows that extremely low voltage activation where a NPN transistor typically only starts pulsing with an input voltage of 0.6 volts. 
if you want to change the circuit in order to work with a PNP type transistor, in other words, one that looks like that. There's really just two things you need to change. Everything else can remain exactly as they are. You change the polarity and you change the direction since an LED has a positive and a negative side. Now if your input is of a very low power type then you don't need this resistor and you'll note an immediate increase in the brightness of the LED if you eliminate that. And then another modification that I use in my circuit is to completely replace the position of the LED and I place my LED right there makes a big difference in how bright it is. Now the circuit is capable of producing some really impressive voltages. In a follow-up video I'll show how you can use a capacitor and literally boost that incoming voltage by 100-200 times. But this is where I'm going to leave it for now.